What's going on, everybody? Hope y'all having a good day. Uh, figured I'd do a little ecto video on uh, what I spent most of last night doing. Uh, got some more of the Tamiya pigment kits and went to town on rusting this ecto body out. seeing a lot of ecto videos and and most of them are yellow but all the ones that are green uh well most of the ones that are green tend to stay that same green so figured i'd do a little little bit of something different and uh just go to town with the rust on this thing uh I think I only used two different colors of rust. I used the, the darker and the lighter. Uh, one thing I don't quite understand with the Tamiya kits is the way that they kind of lump their different pigments together. You would figure they would do rust in one and then all of your metal colors in another and then like your snow and your mud and stuff like that in their own but no they do one color of rust and snow and mud in one and then they do some silver and gunmetal and then rust in another one and i don't know that's just one thing that kind of gets under my skin a little bit i guess but um I tried doing the, the pigments just on the body. Uh, I had scuffed it up with the SOS pad at first and uh, they, they wasn't sticking very well. So I ended up using, uh, it was actually some airbrush paint. It's like a translucent light brown. And I did, uh, for the most part, it was just a light coat over top of the whole body or most of the body. And then I went a little heavier in the spots where I wanted more rust. Uh, you can you can see where I got the paint a little heavier in some spots and lighter in others. Uh, and then after that dried, the pigment stuck to it a heck of a lot better. So um, then I. Once I got done with the pavements, I went over the whole thing with the satin clear. And I was going to tape the windows off, but I decided against it. One, it gives it more of a worn, weathered look to the windows. But also, it keeps you from being able to see in as easy. Because I got my connectors and wires kind of stick up a little bit. There ain't a whole lot of room in the bottom of this thing. So, uh, the, the body lines and the cracks and stuff, I had actually bought a fancy little, uh, fine, like extra fine black paint marker, but for some reason that was just not working out. Uh, it, I don't know if it was a junk marker and dried up quick or what, so it didn't work. So I had to resort to a Sharpie. So the lines definitely don't look as crisp as I wanted them to. It is what it is. Uh, I definitely could have took my time a little bit more, but I wanted to get it knocked out last night as quick as I could and get it out here for one more run today on these knockoff bulgers. Uh, I'm definitely going to switch back to my Proline crawlers. These things look really good on here, but I just not that little extra bit of performance that the crawlers have. I'm missing that. One thing about these tires here, and they don't, I don't even think they have a name brand. They're just straight knockoff tires from China, but this sidewall tread, and I don't mean just the side lugs up on top of the tire. I mean, actual sidewall tread is insane. That's definitely a first for me. They definitely, they, they hook really well. Uh, 
but I need to I need to get my crawlers back on here so I can start hitting this, the hardest lines I got again with at least a little bit of confidence. But anyways, I just figured I'd do a, one more video with the the boggers and then show off all the all the rust I threw on this thing last night. Uh, something I'm kind of on the fence about. I've been hearing a lot of other YouTubers, small channels, uh, kind of going over to that prefer talking to the camera and whatnot. As you can tell, I'm not the most comfortable talking to a camera. Normally, I just do a, a run video and pop in with little subtitles and stuff like that, put music over it. Um, I'll do about half and half on this video, and I know there's there's a handful of you that comment pretty regularly, so if you could just give me a holler, let me know if you prefer me mumbling and stumbling for words, or if you'd prefer just uh, a run video with subtitles and music. So we'll get back to the action here. I do not have high expectations for this climb, at least with these bogger tires, but we'll give her a shot here. Made it up one time the other day, but there was a lot of failed attempts to get that one climb. See how this goes. Part of the reason I want to get those crawlers on here, I bet they would climb this no problem. Wow. Maybe it was just the mud the other day. These tires, I'll tell you what, they continuously just blow my mind. centered here on the skid that is not the tires fault that is the builder of the obstacles fault man cannot believe they just walked right up that thing I had one hell of a time trying to get that the other day I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna make that a permanent obstacle. If I do, I got some refinements to make, that's for sure. I just crudely 
threw something together the other day just to have something a little different to try. These curved pavers here, they got a little too much curve in them for any of the vehicles that I've got. So I had to add a, a couple pavers so I could get that front axle to lead on out a little further so I could keep the rear up on the verticals. I need to come back through and try to make that a little bit more presentable, but it works. Did a little bit of clearancing on the body and took the, the zoomies off of it. Still got a little bit of rub with these big two twos on here. Didn't want to cut too much of the body away. Especially once I go back down to the, the one nines, I'd have a giant gap in there. I'm thinking I might end up wanting to do some sort of an inner fender because there's a whole lot of whole lot of daylight to be seen in there. I'm not really a big fan of that. Right up in there. I don't think it'd be too hard to do. It wouldn't take much because there ain't a whole lot of fender there to begin with. I think I need to get the get the smaller tires back on there first and see what kind of a gap I'm working with after cutting out a little bit more of the body last night for these tires. I need to get back on building obstacles here again i really want to get this suspension bridge that i got put up somewhere as many obstacles as i have at the moment there are a few but you know i don't care how how big of an obstacle course you got eventually you're going to run everything so many times that you're going to start getting a little bit bored with it. So I think it's time to start building again. Hopefully the weather cooperates. leaf blower up here. Starting to get quite the mess happening here. Oh, that's terrible. I don't know about you guys, but I really cannot stand getting leaves caught up, leaves and branches, but I don't know if it's just the scale aspect of it or what but you get a giant leaf caught up in your axle or shoved up in your fender boy it just makes for some horrible looking video for me maybe not horrible it's just less appealing i guess
give this a try. This climb here is about 50-50 with these tires, especially with the, it's not really muddy, but it's still a little on the muddy side. Especially when you start digging in like that. See them sidewall lugs biting there? Just threw me right back onto that log. right up that rock over there and took this thing straight backwards. They are awesome in some situations, but other situations, boy, they are not helpful. There we go. quite a bit but I'm definitely going back to the pro line crawlers I think these here probably be better suited on the race they do bite really well in the dirt that's for sure and they do a lot better on the rocks than i thought they would but I'm trying to make this this acto into more of more of a performer instead of a trail truck i think probably tonight i'm gonna end up uh I'll put the crawlers back on it, and I think I'm going to go ahead and put the 12% overdrive in here as well. Or underdrive, technically, but I'm going to swap the transmission gears out. See what kind of performance gain I get from that. This is actually the first rig that I've ever owned that had any overdrive or underdrive. I didn't realize exactly how much of a difference it made on performance crawling, turning, everything. With the extremely limited budget that I've got here. Let's see how see how good I can make this thing. I don't exactly have any comps anywhere nearby but one of these days I'd like to give it a shot I've had a couple people ask me if I was considering holding any comps out here and I, I don't really see that happening I, I built this place for me and for my buddies and I think I would have to do a lot more work to make it comp worthy anyways even though for the area that I live in this is probably about the best crawling spot around as it sits currently so 
it doesn't uh, doesn't take much around here that's for sure I'm gonna go ahead and guess that my tires might be a little too muddy to even try this give her a shot here and see what happens oh yeah we're sliding already this could end badly That's a pretty common theme here. Once I get to focusing on something, I lose my camera angle pretty easily. But I'm also driving one-handed and I've got my phone recording in my other hand. And it's in the low 30s today, so cold hands, focusing, driving one-handed. I don't have a a gimbal or a selfie stick or any fancy attachments or cameras i'm literally just using my iphone so it is what it is bit of trailing around the outside of the pit here and then I think I'm gonna call it a day my hands are freezing cold and honestly I just want to go ahead and get this gear swap done and get my crawlers back on here may not be a smart idea to do it today because it's gonna it's supposed to snow tomorrow but I'd really like to get back out with this thing all done up for tomorrow and see what happens just out of curiosity i want to see if i can side hill or across this route here i don't even know if the tires will hold it i don't know if it'll side hill this much but Ooh. Never tried this spot before, so trying to find a decent angle might be part of the challenge, also. Nope. Now aside from the, the uh, obstacles that I've built, most of what I've got around here is literally natural tree root climbs or actually climbing up the trees themselves that have leaned over or stuff like this this first piece that i'm currently on right now it was actually laying right where it is currently found it like that and the piece on the other side here it was laying almost exactly where it is currently randomly finding stuff like that is honestly almost as much fun as crawling over some more technical climbs that I've built I think I may have screwed this one up Yeah, these 
tires just don't quite hold. Get back up on here. Can't guarantee it, but I'd I'd almost put money on it. Those crawlers would have grabbed and climbed back up on there. that I'm so dead set on putting the crawlers back on here. I really do like the way that these tires look. Got hung up on a stick and on the little tree I went under. But when I first started crawling several years ago, the mud slingers were my go-to tire for everything. I really like the bulger look, but I tell you, after really getting into more technical climbing and stuff like that, I I was a was a high racks guy for quite a while, but I heard a lot of people talk about these pro line crawlers and how good they are, and seen a lot of guys use them in comps and stuff and tell you they they definitely work that's for sure and they look they look a little bit more scaled than the high racks also that didn't ever used to matter to me but here lately I'm I'm really digging the more scale look and I'm not as scale as a lot of people out there I don't have scale accessories and I ain't doing leaf springs or nothing like that but you know, rusting a body out or that demon I've got that's the first hard body I've ever had as well and you know, it's not the best performer but I've been having a blast with that thing and on that note uh, there's Mickey Thompson tires that I had on it and then found a giant hole in them. Uh, I actually glued that back together and switched some wheels around, got them mounted back up. So I need to, I need to get the demon back out and see if my glued tire job holds up. I don't know if it will or not. Those Mickey Thompsons that are on it, they are uh, RC four-wheel drive version. I'd actually bought those tires literally like two or three days before Proline released their Mickey Thompsons. That, that kind of got under my skin a little bit because the like the sidewall and the actual body of the tire on the RC four wheel drives they're so thin which is why it ripped I don't even know how or when it ripped but the lugs seem like they're a lot harder and that thick hard rubber sitting on top of a real thin body of rubber it's just not a good combination put my castle system in here this thing was definitely needing it I've been a castle guy for as long as I've been in the hobby and into the brushless side of things I really like their their options for tuning the ESC a lot more than like say hobby 
just the, the simple fact that I can tune a throttle, a throttle curve is, that means the world to me. Um, if, if Hobby Wing would give us that option, well, I'd be, I'd be all over Hobby Wing. I, I really like their power delivery and their smooth, but I don't know. I, I don't have any, any transmitters that have the capability of, uh, adjusting throttle expo so i just always always go with the esc that gives me the options that i want uh, so castle is always my go-to for brushless and then uh is as much as everybody has had bad luck with them and, Thing. That, uh, that ISD ISDT ESC70. I've been going with that over the 1080 just because you can Bluetooth to the ESC and change the settings, and they've also got a throttle curve option. So, as a plain and simple fact, that's that. I don't know. It's something about that trigger feel to me. I like to have a lot more of a cushion down low. It doesn't matter how smooth or how slow the startup is on a power system. I like to have a lot more modulation down low in my trigger feel. So until, until somebody changes out their options, that's pretty much what I go with. pretty much going to do it for today. Got some things I need to get back to the house and get to working on. It's starting to sound like bearings is going to need to be on that list here in the future. But definitely want to get this overdrive in here and get some, get some tire swapping going on. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed, um, and if by some miracle you've stuck with me this long through the video, uh, let me know if you prefer me stumbling and mumbling and searching for words and talking to the camera, or if you prefer my normal style of video where... I'll just do a run, put some subtitles in it, and throw some music over it. I can I can go either route, but it's gonna take me a little while to get comfortable with talking to the camera. So, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.